Well, for more, I'm joined from Montreal by the evolutionary behavioural scientist and author, Professor Gad Saad. Gad, uh, it's heartbreaking. I mean, I, as I came on air tonight, I heard the story of, of uh, allegedly, you know, it's not been completely verified, but there are soldiers reporting that in one village they found the corpses of 40 babies, some of whom have been beheaded. Uh, and we know that uh, grandmothers who survived the Holocaust were dragged off and kidnapped, and God knows what's happened to them. Uh, these are unspeakable acts of depravity. What is your reaction to this? Well, of course, I'm uh, devastated by it, but frankly, not to sound uh, flippant about it, it doesn't surprise me for your viewers and listeners who may know me. I hail from Lebanon. We're Lebanese Jews. When I was five years old in 1970 in Lebanon and Gamal Abdel Nasser, the president of Egypt, died, the way that the people on the street were uh, mourning his loss were was to have demonstrations singing uh, death to Jews. What did the Jews have to do with the fact that the Egyptian president had just died? When I was in grade four and the teacher said, everybody stand up and say what you want to be when you grow up. One of my friends with whom I played soccer stood up and said, when I grow up, I want to be a Jew killer. When we left Lebanon to move to Canada during the civil war and the Canadian, the pilot had said that we are now out of Lebanese airspace. My mother put a Star of David around my neck and said, now you don't have to hide your identity and you can be proud of you who you are. So this has nothing to do with colonialism and fighting for this piece of land or that piece of land. It's an existential battle where one group of folks don't believe that the other group has a right to exist there with self-determination. Once we get rid of that mindset, there could be peace. I mean, I, I got to say, I don't think peace has ever looked further away uh, in this conflict. I really think the scale of this atrocity is so appalling that it will demand probably a disproportionate response now from Israel. I don't think Prime Minister Netanyahu will feel he has any choice but to uh, hit Palestine harder than it's ever been hit. And of course, that will cause the death, deaths of many thousands of completely innocent people, many of whom may share a view that Hamas are a bunch of terrorists. Uh, and so it goes on. I just don't see how peace gets forged after this kind of thing. I, I agree. Look, I'm a, by nature, by disposition, I'm an optimistic person, but I get a lot of calls and emails from people saying to me, will there ever be peace? And I, I hate to admit, but I think I share your, uh, your view. And again, it comes from the fact that there is one group of folks who do not believe that another group of folks have a right to self-determination. Sure, they can tolerate them. Sure, they could have them as second-class citizens as dimmies, that's an Arabic word for second class citizen who's protected and tolerated, of course, until you're not. But they don't view the Jews as a people who are allowed to exist with their own individual nation, self-determination, autonomy. And until that is resolved, this is gonna go on ad infinitum. I wanna play a clip now. This is from President Biden speaking just a few minutes ago uh, in the United States. That the United States stands with Israel we will not ever fail to have their back. We'll make sure that they have the help their citizens need and they can continue to defend themselves. Israel has the right to defend itself and its people, full stop. There's never justification for terrorist attacks. And my administration's support for Israel's security is rock solid and unwavering. I mean, Gad, you know, strong words there from President Biden. It's taken him a few days to say them, I have to say. Um, I guess the problem I have with this is Israel is going to go in, like I said, incredibly hard into Gaza. I, I imagine many thousands of people are going to die here. Uh, the situation in Gaza will simply get worse. It's already pretty intolerable for the two million people who live there, many of whom are young people who live really hopeless lives with very little chance of ever getting out of living the dreams that most people have. You know, I understand on the Palestinian side why they have felt oppressed. I understand it. Um, I don't think you can play what aboutery at this moment after this atrocity, and it doesn't excuse the appalling depravity that's been perpetrated by Hamas. But I do understand why people in Palestine feel oppressed. And I don't know how this resolves itself 
in the, the short to midterm or indeed long term. And, and that, I hate that feeling of helplessness about this. Well, it resolves itself when your moral calculus is outraged whenever any innocent is butchered in any place, right? So when I watched videos of ISIS taking 1,500 Muslim men and putting bullets in their head, I was furious. I was angry. I didn't have a tribal calculus that says, mm -hmm. I am Jewish, so who cares if ISIS kills Muslim men? So if I see a Palestinian child who is a complete innocent bystander in the war who is you know, blown up, I'm angry. Mm -hmm. By the same token, if you're seeing Holocaust survivors and Jewish babies being decapitated, then boy, is your moral compass broken mm -hmm. if you can't garner a bit of kindness and sympathy for their plight. I completely agree. Uh, Gad, you speak so much sense, as always. Great to talk to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Well, joining me now is a man many of us know as a famous television personality. He's also a former Israeli paratrooper who fought in the 1967 Six-Day War, and he's a long-term friend of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and that's Uri Geller. Uri, great to talk to you. I wish it had been in happier circumstance. We've talked many times over the years. Uh, what is your response to what has happened here? Okay, Piers, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me onto your show. And I would like to correct you because over 1,200 people were slaughtered. And you said it, children, babies, elderly, women, men. You know what? Dogs were shot. Dogs, pets were shot. I, I mean, I'm, I'm outraged. And I would like to say that over 3,500 people are injured, maimed. Who, how, who knows how many tens of thousands are psychologically hurt, physically, inside their mind. They will never forget this. And I would like to mention, this is very important, that this is the worst tragedy to happen to the Jewish people since the Holocaust. Just think about that. The number of Israeli deaths is equivalent. Now listen to this. To ask if 36,000 people were killed in a single attack in America. And there's no doubt Iran is behind the attack. You know, even if we don't have yet solid proof, there is no doubt that Iran made the conditions, the right conditions for this attack to be possible. And exactly the same way as Hitler made the Holocaust possible. I am outraged, I'm angry, like the millions of Israelis are angry. How could this have happened? L let me ask I you. I call this, first Sorry, of let all... Me, let me ask you. I, I completely agree. Yeah. I, share, I share your outrage here. Um, and it can only be immeasurably worse if you're Jewish, if you live in Israel. It must be immeasurably worse, and I completely accept that. I want to just put aside this atrocity for a moment, and I want to talk about the historic conflict, and I want to ask you, how does this ever get resolved? I mean, the, the scale of what's happened here is so heinous that I don't have any hope that it can be resolved anytime soon. But b before that, what would you have said last week about the, the, the way this ever gets resolved? Well, Piers, look, I'm, I'm not a historian. Um, whether you're asking me this question as an Israeli or as a psychic or to predict how no, this no, will be solved... As an Israeli, really, nobody knows yet. I, I'm an optimist. I'm a positive thinker. I want to believe that um, after this war is finished, and God knows where this war is going to take us, but um, I do believe in diplomacy. I do believe in negotiations. And I think in the long, long run, because I'm an optimist, I believe that there will be peace. There has to be peace. But what do you this feel, Uri, let me ask you, what, what do you feel about the, the plight of the Palestinian people going back decades now? I mean, there can be no disputing the fact that two million people live in appalling conditions there. Very few are able to get out of there. Um, their conditions have just now obviously got ten times worse, and many will say, well, good, they deserve it, but many of them are completely innocent people. Uh, their women, children will get killed as well in this process. And I just wonder, what, how do you deal with Gaza? I mean, what, what happens there? OK, look, you know, 
again, tragically, after this massacre, the gloves are off. They have to be off. Otherwise, this will never, never, ever stop. Look, I feel for the Palestinian people, especially for the children. Children are being hurt on both sides. You know, ironically, believe it or not, I am connected. I support a, a worldwide charity that is based in Israel called Save a Child's Heart. They, we've saved over 7,000 children with open heart surgery. Do you want to believe this, that half of them are Palestinians? Half of the kids we saved are Palestinians. So it's very difficult for me to predict how this is going to be solved. Look, we have to go back, I mean, in history, thousands of years. We, the Jewish people, escaped Egypt. I mean, we were prosecuted for not decades, but not hundreds of years, but thousands of years. And this is one part of this frenzy of war that is happening mm. and is creating chaos, not only in the Middle East, but probably around the world. Look, let me bring back the Iranians. You know, for, for the Iranians now, this gives time to continue building the nuclear bomb. A, a nuclear bomb in the hands of Iran, I mean, that's deadly worldwide. Mm. I don't have to tell you, Piers, what would happen if a nuclear bomb explodes in Europe. Forget it. Forget it, the whole world. Radiation travels in air in way with wind. It's deadly. And we have to focus not only on this immediate conflict now, but we have to make sure Iran does not get the nuclear yeah, bomb. Yeah, I agree. I, and I think, I, I think like Iran's... Said, I think, it, uh, although it's not been established beyond doubt yet, I think it's pretty obvious that Hamas could not have carried out something of this scale without the help of... Uh, of Iran in terms of training, in terms of funding, in terms of all of it. And, it, and they remain a, 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 a global menace and must be treated as such. Uri, I've got to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed for joining me. As I say, I wish Thank it was in... Thank you very much and God bless you all. I wish it was in better circumstances. And uh, my thoughts with everybody over where Thank you are. You. Thank you very much.